everybody welcome to the channel today we're going to be building the walker gaming base it's a budget gaming pc that you see on the screen all the components will be listed in the description below um, but i'll be going through the components while we do this build and the reasons why i picked the components make sure you guys are aware of um static electricity i have myself grounded on my ankle i have a, gr a ground wire and that way it doesn't get in the way of what I'm doing. You could also install your uh, power supply first, plug it in, turn it on, and have yourself touching it the whole time. That way you're grounded. You could either have your bare foot resting on it or your leg resting on it. Um, also be on a non-conductive surface. If you don't have an anti-static mat, use uh, cardboard or um, foam. Also, your motherboard should come in an anti-static bag like you see on the screen. You can also build on top of that. The reason I like cardboard or foam is so that it can absorb some of the pressure when you're uh, pressing stuff down like the um, RAM or cooler before you install it. And when you press that down, there's gonna be pressure. And so you just don't wanna damage anything on the motherboard. When you're installing the CPU, just make sure that the um, notches are lined up. There's also a arrow on the CPU and it's on the outside of that cover. And just make those you could line up as well. As long as they're in the right areas, you're all right. Make sure you don't drop anything on those pins. They're uh, really sensitive and they bend really easy. Um, that cover just pops off as you bend that the uh, bracket arm down and it, it's real easy. You just get it underneath there and you're secure. Like I said, just make sure you're grounded when you do that. If you got a piece of foam underneath, it's best. It'll take up some of that pressure. Just make sure that uh, your motherboard's not going to slide away from you. Don't work on a slide, a slippery surface. The motherboard we're using today is an Asus Prime B660 Plus D4 motherboard. So it's a DDR4 motherboard. It has a six phase V core, has four memory DIMMs. It has two full PCIe slots. The first one is PCIe 4.0 by 16 that runs from the CPU and that's where you'll be putting in your graphics card. The second one is a PCIe 3.0 by 16 and then there's two PCIe 3.0 by one slots. And one of those you can uh, use for a Wi-Fi I like to get the CPU and the RAM installed and the CPU cooler installed before I install the motherboard into the case. It's just easier that way to install as much stuff as you can. If you have any um, M2 hard drives, I would also install them before I installed the motherboard. Um, also make sure that your uh, standoffs are in the correct location for your motherboard. Before I put the motherboard in, I like to blow out the case and make sure that um, there's no metal shavings, especially if I put some standoffs in, because when you put them in, sometimes some metal shavings can form and you just don't want them getting in the wrong area with all the air blowing around in there and all the exposed electrical parts. Um, also make sure you have your face plate put in before you install your motherboard. Also just check on the face plate that Nothing's going to interfere with your like plugging in a cable or anything after you install the motherboard. It's easier to do that before you have the motherboard installed. Then you just slide it in there and just line it up with your standoffs and, and put your screws in. I like to get them all started before I tighten any of them down. That way um, none of them get misaligned. And then I just uh, go in order from top to bottom, or you can go from bottom to top, whatever you want. Just make sure that you get them all and you're not, you know, this thing's not riding down the highway. You ain't gotta crank them down. You just gotta get them nice and snug. When you're installing the power supply, make sure that you're getting airflow from outside the case with the uh, power supply fan. So in this particular case, it'll be pointing down and it'll draw the air from underneath the case. There's a filter down there for it and it will blow the air out of the back of the case or out of the back of the power supply. The power supply in this build will be the uh, Corsair 
VS600. It's a 600 watt power supply. It's 80 plus white. It's overkill for this build, but it should be sufficient for the future as well. A CPU upgrade or a GPU upgrade. The storage device I'm using is a Team Group AX2 one terabyte SATA 3 SSD, and I'm screwing it directly to the cage. Um, some people use rubber grommets there. From my readings, that actually puts the um, vibration, it keeps all the vibration in the hard drive, and it actually is worse for the hard drive, so I screw it directly to the case. I like to install the fans inside the case, not inside the um, front panel. You seem to get more airflow that way. Draws it from the entire front panel, not just one spot on the front panel. If you actually put them in the front panel, what you'll see is you'll get dust only where the fans are. And that's because it's only drawing in air directly there. If you put it actually inside the cage, you'll get dust across the whole thing because it's drawing in air across the whole thing. So you get better airflow in my opinion. It's easier on your fans. As far as fans go, we got two 120 millimeter Corsair PWM case fans up front. And in the back, we're using the included ARGB case fan. And then also we have behind the motherboard as an intake fan, a 140 millimeter, they call it a COC turbo fan. The PC case is a GameMax Brufin C3 ATX case. It's in white and black. Has a um, hinged door as well as 120 millimeter ARGB fan, 140 millimeter turbo fan, they call it, which goes directly behind the motherboard. It has a 2.0 and a 3.0 front USB header. And also the radiator support is 120 millimeter or 240 millimeter on the top and the front supports 120 millimeter, 240 millimeter or 360 millimeter. It also includes a GPU bracket when I'm doing the wiring, I always try and put it in the most inconspicuous place as possible. You're going to be doing this not many times, you know, so once you're done with it, you're done with it, but you're going to see it every day. So you don't want just wires dangling everywhere. Personally, in my opinion, you should hide them and make them look nice because you're going to be seeing it every day and you're only going to be doing it one time. Um, I like to use twist ties at first, that way if I move something around or I add wires later on during the process, um, I don't have to cut anything. And then once I'm sure of where everything's going, then I, I put the zip ties in, take the twist ties off and clip the zip ties and rotate the uh, twist ties so you can't see what's behind them. You can plug three pin fans into four pin headers or into four pin splitters. If you're using a fan splitter, you just make sure you line up the clip and that will line up all the power and uh, negative and signal wire. If you're not exactly sure how you plug a wire in, just look at the end of it and look at the missing pin and that's how, how you line it up. The case I picked for this uh, case is perfect to match with this motherboard. This motherboard only struggles with a 12700 if you um, don't have sufficient airflow, but this case has a 140 millimeter fan directly behind the motherboard, and it actually drops the VRMs about 10 degrees. And with this motherboard and case combo, the 12700 runs just as well as with any other motherboard. Um, there's, there's no drop in performance. The motherboard's not a um, bottleneck with this particular case. On the back of the power button cables and the HDD LED cable and such, you got these little triangles and that tells you which side is positive. Today we're using the Intel 12100F. It's a four core processor with eight threads. It has 12 megabytes of cache. It's a PCI Express 5.0. So it should be relevant for quite a while and it is the um, gaming budget king right now. When you're plugging in your SATA cables, just look at your user manual and just make sure that using a certain port, you're still getting the full six gigabyte speed. Some ports might not have full speed or if you use a certain port, it might disable an M.2 slot. 
So just make sure you look in your user manual for that. For storage, today we got a Team Group AX2 one terabyte SATA 3 SSD. Um, for as far as gaming, there's really no difference between an M.2 and a SATA 3 SSD. Uh, the difference would be only in load times, and that would be 2% or less, so you're really, you're really not going to notice it. Running wires, I like to hide them along the edge as much as possible, or anywhere there's a break in the case where there's an, a natural line, or they usually have a natural wiring um, channel where they want you to run the wires naturally, and so I usually follow that. But any, along the edge of, uh, like you see along the edge of the bottom there, I'll run wires because that's less noticeable because there's a transition there anyways. It looks a lot nicer if you can keep your flat cables together and your round cables together. Um, that's not always possible. Sometimes you have a ridiculous amount of cables or it's just the way the cables are, where they're lined up, or sometimes round ones are connected to flat ones, but I try and do my best to keep the flat ones together and the round ones together. I went with XPG Z1 DDR4, uh, two, two sticks, eight gigabyte sticks at 3200 megahertz. That's really the sweet spot for gaming. There is more performance after that, but it's, it's very minimal, especially when you're talking about this CPU. If you were stepping up in CPU, then maybe there might be more benefit to going to a higher um, megahertz, but really with a 3080 and like a i7, this would be plenty. You really wouldn't be bottlenecking here. You would gain some performance out of going up to uh, 36 megahertz, 3600 megahertz or 4000 megahertz, but it's not like a game changer. It's not like a going up to the next stage of CPU or next stage of graphics card. The graphics card in here is a XFX Speedster Quick 210 RX 6500 XT. With this CPU, power supply, and motherboard, this person will be able to upgrade to a 6600, a 6700, um, a 6700 XT. I think at a 6800, they would probably, probably want to upgrade to a 12400 instead of this 12100 at that point. But up until that point, you could just keep upgrading your GPU and just getting better performance. You wouldn't have to upgrade your power supply up until you got to that 6800 level, I don't think. Now we're gonna go over benchmarks. Um, I ran Time Spy and Fire Strike. The first benchmark on the screen is Time Spy, and that's the stock setting. 
Um, with just XMP enabled, I didn't do any tweaking to the GPU or CPU or anything. The next score you see on Time Spy is after I did an overclock on the GPU and I tweaked the uh, CPU as much as I could in the BIOS to optimize it. And that was good enough to get us ninth place on Time Spy. And the next score here is our Fire Strike on stock with just XMP enabled. And it did good there too. And the last score is our Fire Strike with the overclock and the CPU optimized. And that was good enough for, it got us a legendary score of 14,182. And that was good enough for first place on um, Fire Strike. I also ran it a whole bunch of loops to just verify that it's a stable overclock and ran the stability test as well. Thanks for watching the video. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, take care.